Hi there, I'm Mike Chappell, and in this Cert Mike Explains video, we're going to talk about a topic that often trips people up on IT certification exams, subnetting. Now, it's fairly common for organizations to want to subdivide their networks into smaller pieces for manageability. That's where IP subnetting can be a very effective solution. Subnetting breaks a large network address space up into manageable pieces that administrators can assign to smaller subnetworks. For example, assume that you're using the 10.1.1.0 address space on your network. You might have a network that looks something like this, with different departments connected to different geographic regions. Instead of haphazardly assigning addresses throughout your network, you might decide that you want to use subnetworks. The 10 IP address space normally has the dividing line between network and host addresses here, giving us a single network with over 16 million possible host addresses. If we shift the dividing line to here, we now have 256 possible subnetworks with 254 possible hosts each. We go from having one network with over 16 million hosts to 65,536 networks with 254 hosts each. While they may not all fit on the screen, you get the point here. These smaller networks are much more usable. In our network diagram, we can give the accounting group the 10.0.1.0 address space, the sales group the 10.0.2.0 address space, and the IT group the 10.0.3.0 address space, leaving the remaining 65,533 subnetworks for future uses. Each of those subnetworks can have up to 254 systems connected to it. Once you start shifting the dividing line between network and host addresses around, you'll need to tell network devices how you've done that. You do this by assigning a subnet mask to the network. Now, we'll explore subnet masks in just a moment, but before we do, I want to invite you to visit my website at certmike.com. On that site, I have free study plans put together to help you earn your next IT certification. The plans tie together the content that you'll find in study guides, video courses, and practice tests to help you prepare for your next certification exam and pass that test on the first try. Also, if you're enjoying this Cert Mike Explains video, please take a moment to click the like button below to help other people discover it. If you subscribe to my channel, you'll be among the first to see my new videos as they come out. Now, before we get into subnet masks, you need to understand that IP addresses are actually written in binary form. If you're not familiar with binary math, you'll need to do a little bit of learning there, but I'm going to save that for a different video. We can take this decimal IP address and convert it to binary form, like this. Subnet masks use the same dotted quad notation as IPv4 addresses. Let's build one together for the 10.1.4.0 subnetwork. First, we draw our dividing line between the network and host portions of the address. When we build a binary address, we put a 1 in every location that's used by the network address and a 0 in locations used by the host address. We can then write our subnet mask in two different forms. First, we can convert the subnet mask into decimal form, which gives us 255.255.255.0. That's subnet mask notation. Alternatively, we can simply count the number of ones in the address and then put a slash next to the IP address with the number of ones following it. That makes this network the 10.1.4.0 slash 24 network. Both of these notations describe the same network. It's just different ways of writing it. I hope this video helped you better understand subnetting. If it did, please click the like button below and subscribe to my channel for more IT certification content.